So in this video I will be using the iPhone 13 mini. You can use any phone you want. Some simple tripod. Some RGB panel. I will be using two of these for the backlight. This is some cheap RGB panel from Amazon. You can use anything you want. Also, I will be using the Shure MV88 external microphone, this lightning port. This is optional. Even without it, you will get a pretty good audio from built-in microphones. Also optional, we can use Apple Watch to monitor our video. For key light, the main light source, I will be using the newer 660. So after Putting my key light on, I will usually turn off the main light in this room, which is not very good. And we can adjust the color temperature of the key light. If you're using the natural light source, obviously this is not something you can do, but I can and I like to set it to something cooler because phones tend to be a little bit too warm in my opinion. So let me show you how to set up the Filmic Pro app for YouTube videos. I will reset the settings to the default values. So let me show you how I would usually set it up for my YouTube videos. For resolution I will be using 4K. For the quality there are different options but I would use the Filmic Extreme and for color I prefer to use 10 bit. For frame rate I prefer to use either 30 or 24 frames per second and we have this auto shutter option here so if you have some problems with this flickering light you can adjust it here but I usually set it to auto. For audio quality, if you're using the built-in microphones, I suggest using stereo, but you can use back microphone as well. For codec, there are three options, all of them are fine. For device settings, I prefer to lock orientation and I suggest you check the option to use volume keys to trigger recording because we will be using it going forward. And since we're using the tripod, I would make sure that we disable stabilization and enabled guide. This is pretty useful when we set our frame. So I believe that this is all for settings. Let's change some settings for the color. And there are a few presets. I like to use A or auto white balance. And if you press auto white balance twice, it will be locked like that. And if you press it one more time, it will be locked, but only on record. So this is very useful because you want it to be locked only after you place your object in the frame. For this video, let's use the A. By the way, I suggest you to enable the do not disturb or in this case, I'm using the focus mode for recording. I created myself. And if you have cinematographer kit, you can also enable the log profile, color profile. But I think that for the most people, natural will be the best option to use. So that's it for color. Let's take a look at the exposure by clicking on this circle 
And since we set our frame rate to 24 frames per second, as you remember, let's set the shutter speed to double that, so 148. And let's lock it by clicking on 148. And now we can use this slider to adjust the ISO without adjusting the shutter speed. So we can make it high, but I suggest to make it as low as possible. So for this phone, it is 34. And after we've done that, you can see that we have the red circle for exposure and a red square for the focus. These are locked right now. Let's click on the focus and position it in the point where we want our face to be later when we shoot the video. As you know, we are using the back camera. It means that we cannot see ourselves. I will show you how to use the screen mirroring to use your Mac as a viewfinder. You know, in the recent version of Mac OS, we now can use it as an AirPlay device. And as you can see, this just one click, we can view our iPhone screen on our Mac. Very useful. So now I can position the phone anywhere I want. And I usually put my Mac next to it so I can kind of use it as a viewfinder and I will be using it for the notes later. We will turn up the light a little bit. As you can see, we have a big problem here right away. It is shadows. Obviously, we will need to dial down a little bit on the key light, but by using the RGB panels as a background, we can also kind of fix this problem. And in my case, you can see I'm using the chair from Ikea, which is not very good for this type of video. So I will be replacing it with something different. So that's obviously much better already. I, like I showed you, have two RGB lights. So I will be using the second one to further improve the background of this video. Much cleaner. And I will make sure to a little bit dial down on the key light so the shadow is not very strong. And this only happens when you have the wall behind you, like I do in my video. After I set the frame, I close the AirPlay mirroring. I can use Apple Watch if I want to continue to monitor the video. Both Filmic Pro and Camera App allow you to do that from any Apple Watch. We can also use the regular cable to connect our Mac to the iPhone. And if we open the QuickTime player, click on New Movie Recording, we can also select the iPhone as our camera source. And this will be very handy because we can view what we have on our iPhone screen. And at the same time, we can take a look at our notes as we film our video. I won't be using that because I'm using the Shure MV88 lighting microphone, meaning I don't have two ports on my iPhone. So I will be switching back to screen mirroring. Attaching my microphone. Let's make sure that it is recognized by the Filmic Pro. So after I've done setting, everything i will put the phone where i want i will make sure that the framing is perfect and right before i'm ready to record my video i will turn off the screen mirroring and just use the volume keys to start recording 
Okay, so this is the video. I'm filming this Filmic Pro and right now my, I'm about one arm length from the camera. And it is raining outside so the audio won't be very good. As I actually mentioned before, I can see how I look in my Apple Watch and yeah. I think this is quite good and if you get closer to the camera or you put it closer, you will get more separation from the ground, but even without it, I think that this contrast will give good enough separation. But if you want to get the best blurry background and you are not afraid to get closer to the camera, it is also possible. Now, like I said, we are using the key light, but if you want, you can always experiment with lighting. You can put uh, this lamp here can try to adjust the strength of the key light and it will reflect how your video looks. But make sure you set all of the settings inside the Filmic Pro so they're concrete and then after that just work with your lighting. Now this is Filmic Pro but what will we do if we are using the camera app? Before opening the actual camera app let's go to settings and find camera. From here I recommend to change the quality to 4K 24 or 30 frames per second and if you have HDR enabled disable it because it is not very good for studio shots like this. Enable stereo sound and grid which is similar to guides we had in Filmic Pro. So after that let's go to the camera app and we will be using the video mode, regular video mode. We will be using 1x, the wide camera. And the only thing I would change here is set the exposure to minus 1 or minus 0 0.7. So I will be enabling the screen mirroring once again. So after I set the frame and attach my microphone, I will disable the screen mirroring because I want to see my notes when I'm recording. Okay, so this is the camera app, a little bit different from Filmic Pro, but if you set it up right, it also can be very good. You can see the quality is a little bit different. There is more sharp sharpening happening with the video, but this is might might be preferred way for somebody who don't want to mess with the settings and who don't want to pay twenty dollars, I believe, for Filmic Pro. In my opinion, Filmic Pro is better because it gives you more natural look, I guess. But yeah, this is also very good. Now, after you've done all that. You can, of course, like I said, experiment with the lighting. You can change the framing maybe a little bit and uh, you can position the camera closer to you or further apart from you. But at the end of the day, you will get a pretty good quality video and we can use the dedicated microphone. You can take something like Blue Yeti you can put it in front of you, connect it to your Mac and then sync the audio in post. So audio is also very important. This setup gives me pretty good audio quality, but if you want something more professional, Blue Yeti is also a very good option. And of course, even without the microphone, iPhone out of the box gives you, gives you very good quality. So if this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos like this, and if you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to help you. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you in the next video.